calamitous event, America's entry into the war gave Britain a vital lifeline at a desperate time in late 1941. The crucial rapport between Churchill and America's President Roosevelt is one of the many personal insights which his daughter, Mary Soames, evokes in her new memoir. Lady Soames told me how a conversation between the Prime Minister and one of his generals, worried about the shortage of manpower, convinced her to join up. I heard him say to my father that they must have more men. My father said, you can't. Um, so he said, what should I do? Well, you, have, you must have women then. Mm. And it, at that moment, I became very fired up and rushed off and enlisted with the express intention of serving in mixed anti-aircraft batteries. Being a proper fighting uh, service woman trying to bring down some of the bombers that were destroying London. That's right, something like that. Because you, 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 before that you did see some of the worst of the Blitz. You very nearly came across the, the, the terrible um, moment at the Café de Paris being, being bombed in the centre of London, Piccadilly. Yes, and there's something what reading about it now from my diary that shocks me rather, that we were terribly sorry about it. We couldn't do anything. I mean, what, what it was be, could be done was being done. And I'm very shocked now to realise that we just went on and danced somewhere else. Yeah. It, brought, it brought home to me one's intent on having a good time at that age, I that suppose. That is youth. Yes, yes. Later in the war, of the, the great other leaders that you came across, uh, Roosevelt, FDR, was a particular favourite, I think, and very important to your father. Yes, he was, he was tremendous, he was extraordinary. And of course I always think the extraordinary thing about him is he so dominated his own disability um, that actually it was the last thing you thought about him. You know, he had this very powerful shoulders and hair and wonderful head and one sort of almost thought he was going to get up and walk. Yes. You saw, um, not, I'm sure you didn't see nearly enough of your father during the war, but, but you saw enough of him um, to be very aware, I suppose, of, of the great ups and downs, the sort of ebullience, but also the black dog that you all had to deal with. I suppose black dog must have existed because he himself Talks wrote about, about it. it. Yes. But I think he was largely kenneled by the happy marriage my father had. And also, I think that when my father took up painting, which he did after the crisis of the Dardanelles, um, I think that was a tremendous thing in his life and um, helped very much mm. to resolve tensions. Mm. Leading Britain through the war was, of course, about two men together, your father and King George VI. What was your father's overall attitude to, to him, do you think? Because they'd been on different sides originally during the abdication crisis. Yes, and um, my father always was very touched that um, the king um, didn't, as it were, take it out on him because of the position he'd taken over the abdication. And... Um, but they got to know, and my father lunched with the king. The king used to ask the servants to go out of the room, and they used to help themselves so that they could continue their private conversation. And my father was tremendous, came to admire the king very much because he was a very shy man and he had this stammer. And it was a great effort to him. And my father respected this very much. And they came to have, I think, a, a real genuine friendship between them. One of the most extraordinary parts of your account that really jumps off the page to me is when you go to Berlin uh, after victory. The Premier was accompanied by Mr. Eden and junior commander Mary Churchill. From the steps of the Reich Chancellery, the party visited the now legendary air raid shelter and the place where the bodies of Hitler and Eva Braun were said to have been seen burning. Among the people you meet is Stalin and you found him quite dapper. 
which is a, the word that surprised me, I have to say. Well, his appearance was quite up. Yes, he looked, he had, I couldn't help there see he had this wonderful uniform, cream serge uniform. And um, he had very sort of twinkly eyes. And he was smaller than I thought. Father had him to dinner, and I was allowed to sit just mm. inside the room and hear, hear, listen to it all, which was very exciting, wonderful. And your father, I think, um, heard some bad news about the son of a friend who'd been killed. And Oh, yes. He was with talking with Stalin on one occasion. I can't exactly remember which. When he received the news of the death of a son of a friend, and my father, you know, was quite emotional, and he, I think, probably tears were in his eyes, and he said to Stalin, um, "Oh, you must forgive me because when I think of the terrible losses your armies are suffering, um, and here am I upset by." this news. And Stalin said, oh no, the death of one man is always a tragedy. The death of thousands is a matter of statistics. Yes, moving but quite chilling too. Quite, quite chilling. Quite chilling. Lady Soames. <laughs>